skeptics will criticize the idea of design and living organisms as pointing to a creator and will point to things like redundancies as artifacts of evolutionary processes and not as the result of a creator. But is that true? To help me answer this question today, I'm joined by Dr. Eddie Del Rio, a medical doctor and a Christian. Do you think that they coincide best with an explanation of, of evolutionary processes like co-option or genome duplication, or do they point more to the cleverness of, a, of an omniscient engineer, if you would? Actually, I'm the son of an engineer, a highly <laughs> patented one, and I've kind of learned some things at his hip, you might say, but um, redundancies, of especially critical systems, are an established principle in engineering, especially in uh, automotive, aviation, space, these kinds of things. Many people don't know that um, the hydraulic braking system of cars um, is such that if one line breaks, there's still others. So they'll usually have a Good. front right tire and a back left tire that will work, or the opposite, so that there, a partial failure can ensue, but yet safety be accomplished. Principles like that are found in the body too. We, mm -hmm. for instance, have two kidneys, mm -hmm. and they do great work, and it's necessary. Uh, we have two lungs. Now, can people live without one kidney? Yes. Can they live without a, a lung? They can. However, life is degraded and it cannot be optimized mm -hmm. with, under those conditions. Um, I can think of the sources of blood perfusion to the brain. The brain is an organ, but we don't have a brain artery. Instead, from paths that come off the arch uh, of the aorta, we have several paths that go up. Ultimately, three arteries, carotids on the left and right, and the vertebral artery connect to a looped artery called the uh, circle of Willis, from which everything kind of connects. It almost serves as an auxiliary power box that the brain can have. Um, not just redundancy, what comes to mind at the moment too is the fact that our high pressure vessels, the arteries, are usually deep within our limbs hmm. rather, and that the low pressure venous system or veins are superficial. So when folks uh, have blood drawn at their doctor and they're going to the lab, they're being stuck in a vein to draw blood. It is a considerable, hmm. more painful and harder thing to get to the arteries. Hmm. And hmm. that makes great sense hmm. because the superficial surfaces are more likely to have injury. And so we'd rather have a leak in a low pressure uh, system rather than in the high pressure system. So you just gave us another example of where you see design in human physiology that's not, not contingent upon redundancy, but, but still points to design. And this calls to mind um, a quote that Francis Crick made uh, and that he's often quoted on this, on this statement. Um, he made it in What Mad Pursuit. He said that the biologists, scientists must constantly keep in mind that the things that they see are, are only apparent design, and they're not actual design. They're actually the byproduct of unguided evolution, and they have to keep this constantly in mind. And the apostle Paul in the book of Romans tells us pretty much the same thing. He says, everywhere you look, there's evidence of God's existence and his power and his attributes. In other words, everywhere you look, there's points to a designer. Uh, according to Paul. Well, Francis Crick and Paul can't both be right, and yet they're making the same types of observations that you just commented on. And so in another one of your blogs, um, you uh, actually talk about keeping our eyes on target and the design that's behind the ability to do that when we're tracking moving objects or just in general. And in that blog, you say, how we keep our eyes on target uh, the world is full of objects to look at. And then you add, but only minds can judge context and assign relative value to those objects. In a sense, Paul and Crick are doing just that. They're making observations, and yet as they break it down, they break it down differently the way that they understand it. Um, and so this kind of leads me to this idea or this concept of a triumvirate of design. Mm -hmm. um, we have evidence of design wherever we look, and either we suppress it like Crick employs us to do, or we acknowledge it like Paul employs us to do. But we also have the capacity to recognize design. 
And so there, there's evidence of design, there's the capacity to recognize the design, and I think those two things together actually point to a designer that wants to be known, and so that's why he's left evidence. And so what do you think of, of this? Uh, I agree with you, AJ. Um, uh, this is uh, an old uh, argument, uh, it's even found in the New Testament when Paul is engaging some skeptic Greeks in Athens mm -hmm. and he makes a reference to creation and the God that created everything. Um, that is to say, it speaks to an instinct within us all. Mm -hmm. And I would say that um, Francis Crick's um, words are a philosophical statement. Mm -hmm. uh, that philosophical statement is not a scientific statement. I mean, we cannot say, well, what are the averages? What was the best fit regression? What are the mm -hmm. confidence interval in that data? No, it's not a scientific uh, statement whatsoever. It is a philosophical one. And so it should be treated as such. It should be examined among other philosophical statements. I will say that even the Apostle Paul making his claim about things like that is not a scientific one. It's a philo philosophical or religious one. Now, uh, everyone should examine these things and see if they can have confidence in them. I personally find the evidence overwhelming for a designer. Yeah. And some of these little fingerprint occasions in nature, whether it be in the cell, at the level of the tissue, the organ, the organism, or as our colleagues are experts in, the universe itself, mm -hmm. uh, I find evidence for a designer everywhere I look. That's great, Eddie. And I think that you capture it really well in the blogs that you've written that are available on the Reasons to Believe website, reasons.org. And I know that you've got some other ideas for blogs in mind. So I encourage people to take a look at those and consider the design that they see around them everywhere.